The Hearse by LeBron Keener The air was thick with an unsettling stillness, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves in the breeze. The casket, its polished wood gleaming in the muted sunlight, seemed almost out of place amid the overgrown grass. The antique hearse, with its open door revealing a red interior, loomed like a specter waiting for a passenger who would never arrive. As the shadows lengthened, a chill crept through the cemetery, and the feeling of being watched settled uncomfortably over the scene. Something about the abandonment felt deliberate, as if the casket was a message left for the living. In the silence, a distant sound, a faint creaking, echoed as if the ground itself was responding to the eerie stillness. The casket, with its intricate carvings and polished wood, contrasted sharply with the crumbling gravestones surrounding it. Some were covered in moss, their inscriptions barely legible, while the casket's vibrant sheen suggested it had been placed there recently. The tall grass surrounding it was freshly disturbed, the earth still dark and loose, hinting at a recent burial, or perhaps the disturbance of someone long buried. As the sun dipped lower, casting long shadows, the atmosphere thickened with an air of mystery. It was as if time itself had warped in this secluded corner of the cemetery, blending past and present in a haunting tableau. A sudden gust of wind rustled the leaves, and for a moment, as I stood there alone, the hairs on the back of my neck prickled with a sense of someone waiting just out of my sight. Why I was there, I didn't know. The cemetery, with its haunting stillness, felt both familiar and alien, like a dream half remembered. I struggled to piece together fragments of memory, faces, voices, and a sense of dread. The weight of uncertainty pressed down upon me as I glanced at the casket, its polished wood now a stark reminder of the unknown. What had happened before this moment? Why was the hearse abandoned? And why hadn't the casket been buried? Feeling the chill of the evening air, I stood unsteadily on my feet, each blade of grass a reminder of the life I couldn't quite recall. Instinctively, I began to move toward the hearse, drawn by a compulsion to uncover the truth behind what I did not know. The 59 Cadillac stood like a relic from another era, its glossy black paint gleaming in the dimming light. The elegant curves of its body and the ornate detailing spoke of craftsmanship long forgotten, evoking a sense of both nostalgia and unease. The interior of the hearse was as red as blood, the deep crimson velvet contrasting sharply with the black exterior. The plush floor and ornate chrome fixtures felt both inviting and foreboding, as if the vehicle itself held secrets of those who had traveled within. I climbed into the back of the hearse before I could stop myself, drawn by an instinct I couldn't understand. The moment I settled onto the plush red floor, the door swung shut with a soft thud, trapping me within. The air felt thick, almost electric, as if the vehicle itself was alive with memories. In the dim light, I could still make out the intricate details of the interior, 
a carved wood panel here, an ornate light fixture there, each element steeped in an atmosphere of reverence and finality. I felt a strange sense of calm wash over me, mingling with my confusion. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps echoed outside, snapping me back to my senses. The hearse's engine roared to life, vibrating beneath me as the vehicle shuddered. Panic surged through me as I tugged at the back door handle, only to find it locked tight. I was trapped, encased in the suffocating embrace of the hearse, the outside world slipping further away. The sound of the engine drowned out the footsteps, leaving me alone with my racing thoughts. The atmosphere shifted. The air grew thicker, charged with an unknown purpose. I pressed my forehead against the glass, searching for any sign of life outside, but my view was obscured by darkness. Suddenly, the hearse began to move, gliding forward with an eerie smoothness. Where was it taking me? Desperation clawed at my chest. I needed to understand what was happening. I glanced around the interior, hoping for something, anything that could help me escape or reveal the truth about my situation. I realized with a chill that there was no driver. The hearse moved on its own, gliding through the cemetery without any visible guidance. Fear gripped me as I pressed against the glass, scanning for any signs of life beyond the darkened windows. Panic surged again, and I pulled at the door, desperate for escape, but it was remaining unyielding. As the hearse continued its path, I could feel a strange energy pulsating through the vehicle, as if it was responding to something unseen. My mind raced with questions. Was this a punishment? A rescue? I glanced around the interior once more, searching for clues, something that might explain the inexplicable. At the gateway to the cemetery, the hearse came to a sudden stop. The engine purred quietly as if it were waiting for something. My heart pounded in my chest as I peered out the red velvet curtains through the tinted glass, trying to make sense of my surroundings. The heavy wrought iron gates loomed ahead, their intricate design casting long shadows in the dim light. The stillness felt oppressive, and I could sense something was about to happen. I reached for the door handle again, but it remained firmly locked. In the distance, a semi-truck barreled down the road at full speed, its headlights cutting through the twilight. The rumble of its engine grew louder, echoing in the stillness of the cemetery. The hearse began to move toward the road, gliding forward as if compelled by an unseen force. My heart dropped as I realized it was headed straight for the oncoming truck, the headlights growing brighter and more menacing. I pounded on the glass, panic consuming me. As the distance closed, time felt distorted, stretching out in an agonizing slow motion. I braced myself, instinctively knowing that a collision was imminent. Just when it seemed the hearse would be crushed, the truck thundered closer and in a moment of sheer disbelief, passed straight through the hearse without so much as a dent. I felt a wave of confusion wash over me, as if reality itself had shifted. The hearse remained intact. The engine hummed steadily as if nothing had happened. 
I glanced out the window, watching the truck continue down the road, oblivious to the impossible scene it had just passed. Inside the hearse, the atmosphere felt charged, the weight of something otherworldly pressing in. As the engine hummed softly, the back door of the hearse swung open with an almost supernatural ease. A cool breeze rushed in, carrying with it a whisper of something lost. Had the hearse saved my life? Was I going to be hit by the semi-truck walking up on the road? I was trapped within the confines of the 59 Cadillac hearse's crimson interior, all to be saved from being killed by 20 tons of steel barreling down the road at 55 miles per hour, and now it was letting me go. I climbed out of the hearse and started walking down the road the chill of the evening air brushing against my skin. With each step, I felt the weight of uncertainty lift slightly, replaced by a flicker of hope. As I moved further away from the cemetery, the sound of the hearse's engine faded, replaced by the soft crunch of gravel underfoot on the wayside. I glanced back one last time at the hearse which had saved my life, now just a shadow in the gathering darkness before focusing on the path ahead. The road twisted and turned, and soon I could see the faint outline of a town in the distance, its lights twinkling like stars. Questions flooded my mind. Where was I going, and what awaited me in that town? But deep down, I felt a sense of optimism rising within me. I reached the town and walked into a bar, the warm light and laughter abruptly halting as everyone turned to stare. A thick tension filled the air, and for a moment it felt like time had frozen. There were lots of people in the bar, but they all looked identical to me. They all had my persona, all dressed like me. They stared as if I stood out from them in some way, but we were all exactly the same. Panic surged through me. I took a step back, my heart racing, unsure of what was going on. My own face, my own body many times over. Some people sitting and others standing. Three of me were standing against the billiard table. Even the bartender. It was me. Then I looked at myself in the mirrored wall, and the reflection that stared back was also, most definitely, me. I ran from the bar. I had to get out of there. I slammed the door open and ran through it, out into the street, but a blinding light flooded my vision. I barely had time to react before the semi-truck slammed into me, the impact sending me fifty feet forward. I got up, dusted myself off, and looked around me. There I was in the middle of the road, a mangled mess of flesh, while the countless carbon copies of myself remained inside the bar. I heard a familiar sound grow in the distance, the hum of an engine. It grew louder as the black 59 Cadillac hearse with an interior like blood passed by, its polished exterior gleaming in the lights from the bar. In the back window, within the red velvet curtains, I caught a glimpse of myself just as I had appeared in life. There I was, Looking out, my expression a mix of confusion and desperation. I watched as I tried to break free, pounding against the glass, the same frantic energy coursing through me as I watched. It was as if the vehicle were a portal between my past and this nightmarish present. The hearse slowed, 
and I felt a pull, an overwhelming urge to reach out to that reflection, to save the living being trapped inside, which had been me a short time before. The night air crackled with tension, and for a moment time seemed to stand still. Was this a chance to reclaim what I had lost? As the engine's hum filled my ears, I realized that the answers I sought might be within my own grasp, if only I could bridge the gap between the living and the dead. But that gap between the living and the dead has never been bridged. It is the only true unsolvable mystery. The living believe the dead know the answer. But the dead are just as unknowing as the living. The hearse disappeared in the night, its red tail lights fading into the blackness. I turn around and walk back toward the bar. Purgatory was its name, and I would be yet another shadow of myself within its lights and laughter. I take a seat among the other shadows of myself and watch as the front door opens. Just as I had expected, there I was, just as I had been before, after walking from the cemetery on the long and winding road. For a brief moment, I see a smile on my face, until I set foot inside this bar and see the many shadows of myself. Just like the living in their recurring dreams, I am doomed to see over and over my own demise, running from the bar, blinded by the headlights, then a mangled mess of flesh in the road, then another shadow of myself joining the rest of us in purgatory. The casket, its polished wood gleaming in the muted sunlight, remains unburied amid the overgrown grass. The antique hearse, with its open door revealing a red interior, looming like a specter waiting for a passenger who would never arrive until once again I try to escape purgatory and seek the answers to what I did not know.